It was a dark and stormy night. Suddenly, a shot rang out. The maid screamed. Suddenly, a pirate ship appeared on the horizon. This twist in the plot will certainly surprise a few readers. While millions of people were starving, the king lived in luxury. Meanwhile, on a small farm in Kansas, a boy was growing up. End of part one. In part two, I suppose you tie all of this together. Part two. A light snow was falling, and the little girl with the tattered shawl had not sold a violet all day. <sighs> At that very moment, a young intern at City Hospital was making an important discovery. Aren't you worried you've written yourself into a corner? <laughs> Could it be that she was the sister of the boy in Kansas who loved the girl with the tattered troll who was the daughter of the maid who had escaped from the pirates? Okay, but what about the king? <laughs> Ouch! was a lazy cat. Actually, all cats are lazy. You like writing anti-cat stories, don't you? <laughs> a Million Reasons to Hate Cats. Mm, I'm not sure about the title. <laughs> two million? It'd be way too long. Why Dogs Are Superior to Cats. Subtitle, They Just Are and That's All There Is To It. A shocking new report signed Snoopy. Well, that's more direct and to the point. <laughs> Secretly, Kitten Caboodle wished she were a dog. She was aware of the natural superiority of a dog and it bothered her. I think your anti-cat stories show too much prejudice. I think you're gonna make a lot of enemies. Not everyone hates cats, you know. she asked. Of course, he said. Do you really love me, she asked. Of course, he said. Do you really, really love me, she asked. No, he said. Do you love me, she asked. Of course, he said. She asked no more. I will always wait for you, she said. I'm not going any place, he said. If you don't go any place, I can't wait for you, she said. That's the dumbest thing I've ever read. Hmm. What's more, you never take me any place, she complained. Their marriage was rapidly coming apart. They were behind with their car payments, and the rent on the condominium was due. I'll be anxious to see how you get them out of their troubles. Suddenly, their dog Rex decided he'd better take over. This isn't a sad story. This is a dumb story. That's what makes it sad, right? You know what's wrong with your story? It's unbelievably boring. A person could fall asleep reading it. He fell asleep writing it. I have a suggestion for you. If you can't make things up, 
Why not try a biography? Pick out some person you like and write his life story. Hmm, that might be kind of hard. Dogs don't really like anyone. I don't think your subject is serious enough. You should write something that is really thought-provoking. Write about something that has been a puzzle since the world began. Are there dogs in heaven? Peanuts! This is your answer to your publisher? Author's name? Snoopy. Residence? Just a doghouse. Phone? Unlisted. Schools and colleges attended. Obedience school dropout. Short biography. I was one of eight beagles. We had a happy life. Lots to eat and a good cage. Although looking out at the world through chicken wire can get to you after a while. Married. Almost once, but that's a long story. <laughs> Suggestions for promotion for the novel. A true masterpiece recommended to your friends, dogs, rabbits, and birds, but absolutely not to cats. Reason for writing book. I wrote from a sense of need. I needed something to do. You can't just sleep all day long. These questions are designed to prepare the media with information. Seems pretty thorough. 